So I heard about uh, a religious sister recently who said, uh, in my relationship with the Lord, it's wonderful, it's great, she said. But she said, if ever anything goes wrong in my relationship with the Lord, it's always my fault. And I thought that's a, uh, I think she said, she was saying it in jest, you know, uh, it's always my fault. Obviously, if you're in a relationship with the Lord and something goes wrong, well, God isn't wrong. So it's never, it's never his problem. It's never uh, his lack of love, charity, understanding, whatever it may be, that has caused the problem. It's, it's us. It's us. In our gospel today, we hear the Magnificat, Our Lady's beautiful hymn of praise to God. And she describes herself using the word handmaid, right, servant. It's the same word that's used at the uh, Annunciation. The Archangel Gabriel appears to her, speaks to her, asks her if she will be willing to give God the Father a son, if she will be willing to give God the Son a body, a human nature. And she responds, Behold the handmaid of the Lord. May what you have said be done unto me. This idea of being the Lord's servant is uh, something which I think we, we don't hear a lot about today. Uh, we don't maybe see ourselves in those terms, uh, much to our detriment, I think. To see, the, to see ourselves as a servant, I think it helps us to understand who we are, who God is, and what this life is all about. If I see myself as equal to God, and I've told this story before, uh, if I see myself as, as equal to God, that leads to all sorts of problems. I remember I was talking to uh, a girl who's a friend of mine from year 2000 for years, and she said that she had just had a spiritual breakthrough. She was talking to a priest, and she was describing her different uh, situations in her career and her work and uh, what she had planned to do, and she said, you know... Um, I went through this and I'm praying for that and uh, this other thing is going well and this thing isn't going as, as well as I would like. And the priest just stopped her a sec and said, um, how do you see your relationship with God? And she said, well, I mean, there are things I want to do and, 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 and God helps me. And he said, okay, do you notice what you're just after saying? That you have plans, you have things you want to do and God helps you. So you command him. So either your relationship is that you actually command God, or maybe you're kind of on par, that God and you are kind of doing things together, right? Which, again, doesn't sound like the worst thing in the world, but it doesn't reflect reality. The reality is that God is God, and you're not. We're his servants. So it's not like that we have plans to, to renew the world or to even realize our own happiness and God has to help us achieve those but God has a plan for you and I God has a plan for the church and we have to realize his plan so we have to be asking him Lord what is your will which doesn't mean to say obviously that you know we have this analysis paralysis and can't do anything uh, unless we have a clear sign from God that that doesn't really work either we, we do have to pray and discern and make the best decision we can based on what we know at the time. But the point is, though, the overall point is that I'm trying to help God realize his plan and not use him as my servant. I serve him. And this is Our Lady's greatness. Our Lady's greatness is her humility. Our Lady's greatness is her smallness before God. So today's gospel continues from, from yesterday's, where uh, Our Lady meets Elizabeth and the child leaps within Elizabeth's womb. And uh, Elizabeth has that, that, that beautiful greeting. Now soon Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her room, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and gave a loud cry. Of all women, you are the most blessed, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? Why should I be honoured with a visit from the mother of my Lord? So Our Lady is, is the mother of God. Our Lady is filled with God. Our Lady is filled with the Holy Spirit. Her greatness is her littleness. Her greatness is her emptiness of herself. If she was full of herself, there'd be no room for God. But she's empty of herself. And therefore, the Holy Spirit has so much room 
to occupy within her. And then that, 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 there was a, a discussion here, almost turned into an argument uh, between some of our uh, young students here, where someone used the expression more perfect. One guy said, sorry, perfect is perfect. Perfect is already 100%, so you can't have more of 100%. You're already, 100% is full. So there's no such thing as more perfect. And then someone else argued, which I thought was really, really smart. They said, yes, but the, the circle can get bigger, can't it? A circle is perfect. It's, you know, complete. But the circle itself can get bigger, can't it? So Our Lady was conceived of all sin of original sin, so she was perfect. But she was capable of growing in love as a human being, which she was. She was capable of growing in knowledge, love, and understanding of God. So her greatness is her littleness. Her greatness is her humility before God. And that's what allows him then to work great things through her because she doesn't get in the way. She makes a kind of a prophecy, which I'm not sure is 100% realized yet. A lady says, because he has looked upon his lowly handmaid, yes, from this day forward, all generations will call me blessed. I think for a number of centuries, uh, the number of people calling her blessed maybe is maybe decreasing. And definitely in recent decades in the Catholic Church, there are some who not only don't call her blessed, they simply don't call her at all. There's almost a fear of our blessed mother, that it's too devotional, it's too simple, it's too uh, common, you know, and we'd prefer more uh, modern spiritualities. And as we've seen, this, is, this, this has happened with your Tai Chi's and your mindfulnesses and all that kind of thing coming in to, to, to replace uh, Catholic devotions. There's even a, a retreat center I know that um, instead of a Stations of the Cross outside, they have a cosmic walk. So rather than putting God in the place that he deserves, we replace it with other things. And rather than putting Our Lady in the place that she deserves, we replace her with other things, other, other prayers, other devotions, other things that aren't, that dare I say, aren't of God. So rather than calling her blessed, we simply don't call her at all. This prophecy will be realized. It's already the case in heaven. When we are in heaven, we see who Our Lady is and how Our Lady is. And no prayer that we give to her in order for her to pass on to the Lord is considered an exaggeration. So we ask for a rediscovery of Our Blessed Lady's humility, Our Blessed Lady's greatness, the power of Our Blessed Lady's intercessory power before God. We ask that in this season of Advent, that Our Lady might not just carry Jesus within her womb to the crib, but she might carry each one of us to her son, so that we in all eternity might confess her greatness, her blessedness, and exult in the Lord God, our Saviour. <laughs>